Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Today's Friday, so we're going to do another episode of Fun Fact Friday. So, why are most of the strongest men in the world white? Right. So, that's the question that I got when I made the other two videos on uh, black people and the genetics and uh, Polynesians and all that stuff. Right. So, why are most of the strong men, right? And when I'm when I say strength, I'm referring to strongman competition, not just powerlifting and stuff like that. Just the strongman competition, right? Why are the majority of uh, strongman competitors white? In fact, why are all the winners white? So what we're gonna do is first we're gonna investigate the claim, figure out if that's true, and then we're gonna try to come up with reasons why. We're gonna explain the reasons why. All right, again, if you uh, missed out on the previous videos, check them out, right? The first one was on black people, why why the fastest men in the world are, uh, are black, specifically uh, West African descendants. So that includes African Americans, you know, Jamaicans, Caribbeans, all that stuff, right? So I explained that, and I also explained why, uh, you know, they dominate the bodybuilding scene so much. Why do black people, why, why do West African descendants build muscle so much faster and again it's not all of them is you know so it's a big percentage like i said watch the video i go into details uh and then the second video was when i explained why um polynesians and samoans pretty much uh pacific islanders you know you know get big so fast you know if you guys don't know they're overrepresented in the nfl you 50 times more likely to be in the nfl if you are uh pacific islander which is insane it's such a small group of the population you know and i also go into the details because the rock Lucky motherfucker, you know, he's half black, half Polynesian, so, you know, he inher inherited a good genes. But anyway, watch those videos. And in the comment section, everyone was asking, well, so how come most of the strong men are white, you know? Um, so first, disclaimer, guys, on this channel, we talk about everything, right? So I know we live in a society where everybody gets fucking butthurt and sensitive the moment you mention race. If you that sensitive, fuck off. I don't want you on my channel, right? We talk about everything here. We talk about race. We talk about genetics. You know, it's all for science. It's all for fun. Nobody's racist here or whatever. So if you can't handle those topics, or if you feel like, you, you know, you have a superiority complex, just get lost, right? I love science. So I don't care what the topic is. I like to discuss it. It doesn't mean that one race is better or worse than the other. No, it's just the results of natural selection. All right, let's get to it. So first, first of all, it is true, right? The vast majority of strongman competitors are white. And in fact, all of the strongman competitors, I believe they have 42 shows since the inception uh, in, the 19, in the late 1970s. Every single winner was white. Now, why is that, right? Very simple. So, first of all, it's, they're not just white, right? They come from a very, very small percentage of the European population, right? So, if you're looking at the map right here, right, where would you guys guess that the majority of the, you know, strongman champions come from? right here most of them come from here right obviously you have america because you know it was actually uh, an american event at first but most of them come from here it's mainly nordics you know mainly uh scandinavians you know so whenever i say nordic scandinavian i'm pretty much referring to you know again northern europe right you have iceland finland blah blah blah, blah right the majority of the winners come from here now why is that as you can see here these are the champions by country. You have the United States, you have Iceland, United Kingdom, Lithuania, Finland, Poland, Sweden, Netherlands, Norway, blah, 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 right? As you notice, right? And these are all the champions in, in the last 42 events, right? All the gold uh, gold medalists, which is insane, right? Because the world is this fucking vast, yet all of the winners of the strongman events mostly come from here, right? And obviously some from America. So why is that? No one reason is hype, right? You got to understand, guys, one of the biggest... Determine one of the biggest predictors of if you're going to be successful in strongman is your height, right? It's the number one. The number one predictor is your height. In fact, uh, the average uh, strongman competitor is about 6'2. In fact, the average champion is 6'2, right? Which is obviously much taller than the average person. So they're over here, right? They're between 5'10 and 6'7. That's where all the strongman champions are from. That's not a coincidence. I'm going to explain why in a minute. So height is the biggest predictor, right? You're not going to find a strongman who's 5'3 or 5'4. A strongman champion that is right um maybe in the future somebody will come in and break that but for now the vast majority uh you know in this uh in this range here which is insane now you might ask yourself why is this number one the taller you are this is very this is common sense right it's basic anatomy the taller you are the more muscle you can pack in your frame right that's reason number one 
it's just that simple. I mean, look, looking here at Elite Priest, which is, you know, great bodybuilder. Uh, I believe he was 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, five. Um, there's only that much muscle you can put on a 5'4 frame, right? And Elite Priest was huge compared to the average person, you know. Don't get it twisted. But standing next to, uh, you know, Jay Cutler at 5'10", uh, Marcus at five ten, you can clearly see uh, the difference, right? Does that mean that these guys train harder than him? Of course not, right? They're just taller. The taller you are, the more muscle you could put on your frame. I mean, uh, I think his competition weight was about two two twenty, two twenty five, and these guys went up to two eighty, right? So you giving up, you know, up to fifty pounds of muscle uh, to somebody who's taller than you, just a few inches taller than you, right? So again, for strong man, it's important because again, the more muscle you have on your frame. Uh, the more force you can produce. That's just common sense, right? So someone who's, if two people max out the genetics, that guy who's six, you know, six feet tall is going to have to produce more force, is going to be able to produce more force than the guy who's about five feet. And of course, you know, the leverage is coming to play, depends on the exercises and things like that. But for, you know, the general guideline is the bigger you are, the taller you are, the more muscle you can pack in your frame. So that's why, that's one of the reasons why most of the showman competitors are way above average height. They, all right, they can pack on more muscle. The second most important reason is the lifts, right? Pretty much more than half of the strongman lifts are hard as fuck if you're short, right? So being tall gives you a huge advantage. You know, for example, Atlas Stones, huge advantage if you, you know, if you're tall. Can you imagine if you like fucking, if you're a pygmy from West Africa trying to do this shit? You fuck, right, from the start. It doesn't matter how strong you are or how good your leverages are. So a lot of lifts just simply, you know, favor taller people. Fingers, finger. The taller you are, the easier this lift is. The car flip. The cat toss. Right? Can you imagine trying to do this if you're short as fuck? Right? Obviously, being taller helps you here. The tire flip. And obviously, you'll carry. Right? Because the taller you are, the less steps you have to take. So, there's a lot of movements that pretty much favor being tall. You know? And there's also you know, very few percentage of movements where you just can't even attempt them shits if you're too short. Right? So, those are the two reasons why height is a huge advantage uh, for strongman competitors, and which is why, you know, again, you know, 100% of the champions are above average height. Now, what does that have to do with white people? Or what does it have to do with uh, Nordic men, right? Scandinavians and Northern Europe, whatever. Well, look, average height of man by country. The tallest country in the world is up here, right? These are the tallest motherfuckers on earth, right? And again, country-wise, right? Because the tallest tribe is actually in Africa, somewhere here. Uh, the not loading men, but that's that's the tribe. That's not the whole country. So as far as country goes, the tallest man in the world are here, Northern Europe, right? So right off the bat, these countries have an advantage when it comes to producing uh, the world's strongest man for the strongman competition. And sure enough, remember this map? This is where all of the winners are from. See, this is where all the strongman competitors are from, and this is the map of the entire world. There's not a single champion outside of this red place here that I shared it for you guys. And look, corresponds with the tallest motherfuckers. Second reason is protein, right? Protein intake, in case you in case you guys are not familiar, uh, one of the biggest predictors of your height is the amount of animal protein or good quality protein you were able to eat when you were a kid. That's one of the biggest predictors of your height. Uh, that's why, you know, countries that, you know, that have very, very low protein intakes, you know, kind of like, you know, so the poor places of India, poor places of uh, Africa, you know, the kids have their, their, their growth stunted, right? The amount of protein, specifically animal protein you're able to eat as a kid, is one of the biggest predictors of your height. And of course, those countries are very high on the protein index scale, right? They eat a lot of protein. So, so they're one of the few countries with some of the highest protein intake. Not only, like I said, not only is beneficial for height, growing strong men, but of course, you guys know how important it is for performance and strength and just packing on size in general. And sure enough, look here, right? Out of all the countries, these are some of the countries with the highest protein intake. You have Iceland, which is off the charts here. Obviously, you have America, you know, Australia. But as you can tell, there's no coincidence why a lot of strongmen come from these regions. Compared to the protein intake in Africa or Saudi Arabia or India, blah, blah, blah. As you can see here, that's the protein index, and it shows you the correlation between protein intake and height. And look, you know, I circled some of the Nordic countries where most of the strongmen come from. And look at that, right? Netherlands, Sweden, whatever. Is it by coincidence? Fuck no, right? These are all the countries with the tallest men, and it's also all the countries that produce um, all the regions that produce the most strong men. Reason number three, money. Money, money, money. That's reason number three. The third most important reason why most of the strong men come from those regions. Number one, 
you guys should know, unless, uh, especially for those guys who've never been outside of America, having a gym is a fucking privilege. You go to poor places in Africa, poor places in uh, India, whatever, having a gym is a fucking privilege. Gyms are not cheap, guys. Gyms are expensive. In fact, in most of the poor countries, they actually have to make equipment out of scraps and shit, right? So, countries that are going to produce weightlifters and strongman competitors and powerlifters are places where it's easy to have access to a gym, right? So, you got to have a high, it has to be a country with a high GDP per capita. Number two, steroids, right? The elephant in the room. Of course, I'm going to mention it, right? You think these guys are natural? Get the fuck out of here, right? So, massive amounts of steroids. That's not cheap, guys. You're not going to get your tests and your DHT derivatives and your nandrolone derivatives, you know, from the corner store, right? You're not going to find those in a poor village in Africa or India somewhere, right? Those are very, very, very hard to get, especially for people who are going to be taking them for years. Good healthcare system, right? If you snap your shit up, got to have a healthcare system. You guys think strongman competitors don't have injuries, you know, or, or have to do surgeries and things like that? You got to have a place... A country where you know you have affordable health care and of course you know these guys get a fuck ton of calories right i mean just look at the amount of food these guys eat in one day right that grocery bill is off the chart so you're not gonna have a lot of poor countries or poor regions producing a lot of strong men also it's not a sport that pays a lot of money right it's not a sport that pays a lot of money relative to the amount of work that these guys put in the amount of money that they're spending to training the, the the winners you know are not getting a lot of money especially if you're not in the top if you're not in the top three good goodbye right you're barely getting anything so uh the countries that are going to produce strong men are countries where you know the gdp per capita is pretty much high you know it's high enough where people can it's pretty much a leisure sport it's not something that you do to feed your family you don't say i gotta feed my family i'm gonna go become, become a strong man no right so th- so it has to be so you're mainly gonna see strong man emerge from countries where you know people can chill people can relax right they don't mind doing this for fun or, you know, for glory or whatever. Whereas poor countries, not only they can't afford all this other shit right here, but they can't afford to spend that much money and get uh, so little return, you know. Uh, now, if you're first place, of course, you're getting sponsors and all that stuff, but there can only be one champion, right? And, of course, like I mentioned earlier, protein. Protein is the most important macronutrient, and it's also the most expensive macronutrient. So you got to have a lot of money to have a diet very high in protein, especially animal protein. Plant protein is actually pretty fucking cheap. And sure enough, where are the countries with the highest GDP per capita? Look for green and dark green. Obviously, you have the United States. And look here. See? Iceland and all the Scandinavian countries. And as you can see, dark green, meaning more GDP per capita than light green. Right? So once again, these guys are literally strong man producing countries. Because remember, you can't just have one of the factors I listed. You got to have all the factors lined up. Next reason. They don't have pressure from other sports, right? Because you best believe, you know, a lot of these guys would have been in the NFL, right? A lot of the talent, you know, would have went to the NFL. A lot of the talent would have went to the NBA. That's where most of the tallest guys go, right? Remember, the biggest uh, requirement for strong man is to be tall. Well, if you're super fucking tall, chances are from a young age, you're gonna be you're gonna be recruited to play basketball, whether it's for high school or for college. In fact, Thor was a basketball player right until he got injured. Same thing. Same thing, Brian Shaw, basketball player in co- in high school and college. The NFL is not huge in Iceland. If they're rec- recruiting heavily, then mo- almost all of the strong men uh, will be in the NFL. They'll be playing linemen or they'll be playing centers in the NBA. These are sports that pay a lot more money. Uh, like I said, it's just, those sports are not that big in Iceland and the rest of Scandinavian countries. Now, I'm not saying they don't watch basketball or they don't watch the NFL. I'm just talking about uh, compared to the, you know to the United States, it's not the same, right? These guys are more into like soccer and things like that. Same thing about Usain Bolt and why Jamaica produces so many sprinters. I mentioned that in, uh, in the Black Genetics video. If Usain Bolt was born in America, there's a very, very low chance he would be sprinting, right? He would be in the NFL as a wide receiver or safety, right? That's just facts. So that plays a huge role. And the last reason is obviously the culture, right? Remember, a lot of these Scandinavian countries, they have a lot of Viking DNA. A lot of them are descendants from Vikings. And um, the culture emphasizes strength and glory and all those things. So that's going to play a huge role in what people want to be. For example, if you grew up in a project, so in the hood, right? Say you're a black kid, grew up in a project. You're like, hey, I want to be a strong man. Nobody gives a fuck, right? Nobody even cares, right? Because, again, the culture in those regions is more, you know, geared towards basketball or football or whatever, right? Whereas in Iceland or... Finland or most of the Scandinavian countries, if you say, hey, I'm a strong man, you actually get props, you get respect, 
You know what I mean? For example, walk up to a random America and say, name two strong men, not even name two, name one strong man champions from America. They, they can't even name one, right? Because nobody gives a fuck, right? It's not a sport that's very, very, very popular in, you know, in, in America. The culture is just not obsessed with it, you know? Like I said, walk to a random American and say, who is the, uh, you know, name two strong man competitors, name two strong man champions. They're going to name Thor because of Game of Thrones. He's very popular. And that's about it. You know, so culture plays a huge role. Whereas you go to Iceland and, you, you know, if you're a strongman champion, you get a lot of fucking respect. You get a lot of credit. You know, these guys are, you know, they put a lot of, you know, culture plays a huge role in uh, what sports people gravitate to. And of course, you also have to look into natural selection, right? You remember guys when the Vikings went out raiding and stuff like that. Uh, if you were a taller Viking, you obviously had an advantage in warfare. You had an advantage in combat, you know, especially if you're using axe or saws or whatever. If you were a taller Viking, you had a huge advantage, meaning higher chance of you passing on your genes, higher chance of you surviving, natural selection kicks in. And those are the guys who went on raping and pillaging, all that stuff, right? Clapping cheeks left and right throughout Europe and passing on the genes. So there's obviously a lot of um, Viking genes at play here. By the way, guys, you got to play this game. Uh, it's a very old game. Uh, came out years ago, but it's still one of my favorite games ever. Vikings Battle of Asgard. You guys know I'm a, I'm a big history nerd, so I study like almost every fucking culture out there. And the Vikings is some of my favorite cultures, some of my favorite warriors, along with the Spartans, Zulus, things like that. But yeah, um, and also Thor's my favorite Marvel character. But anyway, play this game, and I can't wait for Assassin's Creed Ragnarok that's coming out. Uh, I've been waiting forever, forever for Assassin's Creed to uh, to make a Viking version. Uh, but yeah, back to the video. Um, also, by the way, you also gotta watch this TV show. I fucking love this show. Oh man, Ragnar Love Rock. You gotta watch Vikings, guys. But anyway, so yeah, so culture plays a huge role, and that's about it. Conclusion: Why are most strong men from Scandinavian and Nordic countries? Number one, it's obviously height. Uh, those are the countries that produce the tallest men. Uh, number two, right, very high protein intake. Uh, number three, money, right, some of the highest GDP per capita in the world. Uh, number four, there's no, there's not too much pressure, uh, too much recruiting pressure from other, uh, sports that, that steal away all the tall and strongest men like the NFL and obviously the Viking culture, right? Kind of like how in Jamaica, if you're a sprinter, you're actually popular. Whereas if you're a sprinter in America, nobody even knows your fucking name, right? So those are the five reasons why most of the strongman competitors are white and specifically from Scandinavian countries. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Comment your opinions below and see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, don't forget to like the video, subscribe and hit the bell. Visit my website and grab a copy of my ebook and training program. Go to www.team3dalpha.com and don't forget to use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus Overload.